Christian Parenting. Aloha, friends. Welcome to the Boy Mom Podcast, powered by Christian Parenting. I am Monica Swanson, mom to four boys, podcast host and author of Boy Mom, What Your Son Needs Most From You. Here on the podcast, it's my goal to bring you practical advice and biblical wisdom for raising boys in this sometimes crazy world. You can always find show notes over at monicaswanson.com forward slash podcast. I'm so glad you're here. You also want to be talking about the content of the game. So, you know, why is that character dressed that way? Why do you think they did that? Why is that character male, female, old, young, black, Hispanic? What do you think the game is trying to say about that character? Why do you think this game can only be solved by killing everybody? Why can't anybody talk to each other? You know, you need to talk about these things and you can't do that if you are just like shutting it out as a parent. So you need to listen to your kids about what games they're playing and know about them. Aloha friends and welcome back to the Boy Mom Podcast. I'm so glad you're here today, and I'm so excited to share this episode that I've been looking forward to for a long time. Now, you were just listening to a short clip from Liz Busby, today's interview, and oh my goodness, Liz brings us so many good tips and guidelines and resources, and what's really cool is um, she's offering to share all of that with all of you in writing. So before we ever had this interview, Liz sent me pages of notes and I was so impressed. They were so helpful. And I asked her if I could share them with you too. And she said, yes. So you're going to find all those in show notes. So you get to just listen and take in everything she's saying and you don't have to take notes, but you might be tempted because she shares a lot. Now, the cool thing about Liz, like I mentioned last week and the uh, end of last week's podcast episode is Liz herself is a gamer. She grew up loving video games and she still loves video games. She's married to a gamer and they're raising four kids. And yet she has done her homework. She has done her research. She has a very balanced approach to keeping kids safe, using games for all their good, but also preventing some of the bad that can come with them. Um, she has written extensively on this topic. She has three articles we'll be linking to over at Protect Young Minds. Kristen Jensen, who was on earlier this month, uh, her website, which are really good. I highly recommend you checking those out. And I just think whether you're like me and you're like, you know, typically say no video games, let's just avoid them. Or if you have already opened that door and your kids love games and you're just trying to figure out how to navigate, I think that what Liz shares is just such a healthy, balanced approach. And when that day comes, if you've got little ones and you're not sure yet what you're going to do about video games, maybe you and your husband have different views on it. Well, I think these guidelines are going to be just what you need to help make some really good choices and to maybe be a little more balanced than, say, I've been in the past. So I enjoyed this conversation so much. You're going to love Liz. I'm not going to carry on any longer. I'm going to dive right in. I do want to pause to just say Thank you so much for spreading the word about, especially these um, Boys in Technology episodes. I think it's so important this summer that we share them um, with our friends. This is such a good time to be equipped and to really make some decisions about everything from training our kids, talking to them, having those conversations, to filters, and now to video games. So thanks for spreading the word. Hey, if you haven't left a rating or review yet, I would sure appreciate that. You can do it right on your phone by opening up your podcast podcast app, finding my podcast, scrolling down, hitting those five stars. And if you want to leave a few words about what you like most about the Boy Mom podcast, I'd be so honored. Okay, guys, I'll have a few final words to say at the end, but without further ado, here is Liz Busby and I talking about video games. Enjoy. Hey, Liz, welcome to the Boy Mom podcast. Hi, it's good to be here. Thank you. I almost said welcome back on the Boy Mom podcast because... Listeners, you can um, appreciate that Liz is with us today because we already did this once. (laughs) Last week we tried recording and um, we're almost to the end when my internet completely crashed and then later found out nothing Liz said had been recorded. And so we're just calling that a practice run and now we get to do it again. So thank you for your graciousness, Liz. We appreciate you. (laughs) Yeah, no problem. It should be better the second time. (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I hope so, man. I was so enjoying our conversation last week. So before we dive in, because I've got a list of notes and this is such a hot topic for so many moms listening. Um, so first, can you just tell us a little about yourself and why you are here to talk with me? <laughs> um, so I'm Liz Busby. I am a mom of three boys and then one girl on the end. So Mm -hmm. I was a boy mom for many years. (laughs) Um, Yes, indeed. I am a writer and I write for Protect Young Minds, um, talking about video games and technology subjects. So I have some experience in this area. (laughs) Yeah. And where are you? Um, Oh, yes. I live in Utah now, but we just moved Mm -hmm. from the Seattle area. Mm -hmm. Right on. Okay, well, we um, we met through Kristen Jensen from Protect Young Minds, who's been on a couple times here, and we just love her, her books, the Good Pictures, Bad Pictures books that so many of you listening I know have got your hands on. And I reached out to Kristen to say, you know, I, I'd really like to cover the topic of video games. I want a balanced approach. I want someone who knows what they're talking about. And um, she sent me straight to Liz, so I'm really glad. And wow, Liz has a lot of knowledge and experience. And I say experience because Liz, you yourself are a gamer, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So growing up, my mom actually had a rule that we couldn't have any video game consoles in the house and they were, they were not allowed. We were allowed to borrow educational video games from the library. And then <laughs> when I was probably a young teenager, my uncles got my grandma a Nintendo console for her house. So we would play at her house on Sunday during family dinners. <laughs> So the adults could be alone. And then my younger brother, when he was 12, finally saved up his allowance and snuck out and bought a Nintendo console for our house and kept it hidden from my mom for a few weeks before she found out. And so after that, we kind of became a video game family. And I still, I play video games with my kids and with my husband. I don't have as much time anymore, but I try to get through one a summer, and that's like something we do together as a family. I just love it. And my boys loved when I told them that I was going to have a mom on to talk about video games. I'm like, and she's a gamer. And they're like, really? I didn't know moms could be gamers. I'm like, oh, yeah. So this is super cool. I just love that you have such a, such a balanced approach because you do appreciate so much about video games, but yet you're going to give us some really good guidelines Uh, Because as I've shared here before, and I've told you, Liz, our family has primarily, you know, kept just a very casual relationship with video games. I think uh, my son got an Xbox, a used Xbox when he broke his arm one year and couldn't surf. And that thing is put up high on a shelf, except for it's brought down occasionally for, you know, when friends are over or a holiday. And uh, we just have mostly focused on all the things kids can do without being on a screen. And so, you know, here in Hawaii, that's not too hard. So a lot of outdoor activities or reading books, nice weather anything. all year. Yeah. Not like so in we Seattle are... where during the winter, right. it's just rain and it's dark at four. <laughs> exactly. So I have great empathy, compassion for people who don't have, um, you know, the weather we have and all that. But at the same time, I know a lot of parents who are listening, you know, have also found that video games have a can play a great role in a kid's life. I agree. I've read enough about this stuff to know that there isn't just one easy answer. So let's dive in. I'm super excited. We've got a list of questions. And the good news is everyone listening, huge blessing. I'm, I'm going to include not only some links to amazing articles Liz has written for Protect Young Minds, but also some notes that she has given us. So if you don't want to take notes right now, you can just hit those show notes afterwards and grab everything, pretty much an outline of what we're talking about. Uh, But I think Liz is going to add a lot of insight here. So let's start with some helpful guidelines for kids and video games. Uh, Go ahead and give us us some basic guidelines to follow. Well, so there are... There's always a balance, right? Um, Video games can definitely take over your life or you can completely ban them from your house. I think you need to be somewhere in the middle because if you completely ban video games from your house, you lose the chance to teach your children how to regulate their video game use, which might be fine if they are not interested in video games. But if they are interested in video games, then the chances are as soon as they leave your house and go to college, someone's going to play a game with them and they will have no skills to regulate the balance between that and regular life. Um, Or they'll go over to friends' houses and play there where you can't see what is going on Mm -hmm. and what they're playing. So I feel like it's super important to be involved in this as a parent and not just 
ignore this part of life because they're not going away. Yeah, good point. Very good point. Okay, and um, you point out the video games are just another form of media entertainment like TV or, or books or social media, but there are some advantages to video games. Right, right. So there's a researcher named Jane McGonigal, and you can look her up. She has a couple of TED Talks, and she also has this book called Super Better, which talks a lot about how video games can actually be used in a very positive way. Some of the pros are video games are interactive, whereas TV watching is passive. So mm-hmm. if at least if you're subbing one-to-one TV for video game time, video games are more active and mm-hmm. are more building of your kid's brain rather than sitting passively and consuming something. Video games are also a great way to build relationships. I have, my boys are 10, 10 12, and almost eight. And video games is something they can all play together, whereas you know, physical games like tag, the eight year old is just going to not do well. And Mm -hmm. board games like the same thing. It's hard for them to compete on a fun level for all of them. But in video games, they can compete together and they can be cooperative together and really bond together as siblings. And it's been really great during the pandemic that it's given them something to do together. And they've been each other's best friends. I I love that. I was just going to add to that because we have a friend who left the island. He's from a big family. And since he's moved away, he said the the best way for him to connect with his brothers is they can all get online and play video games together. And I was like, oh, that's really cool that he can do that from a distance and they can be competitive and have fun and communicate even. So I love that. Yeah. I, speaking of moving away, my my younger brothers had a cousin their age who lived in California and they had a great mm-hmm. relationship with him because they would get on and play video games together from Utah to California. And they would not have been able to play together more than once a year. But because of video games, they could have that relationship. Yep. So, and this is even true with parents. Um, If you Mm -hmm. can learn how to play a video game or two with your (laughs) kids, you can build your relationship with them through that. Um, My oldest child um, was diagnosed with depression, severe depression in third grade. And one of the things we did besides therapy and medication to help him build back up that trusting relationship with us was we played Farmville together as a family. Mm. Now, Farmville is not a game where you sit down and play it together, but you play on your own device and you can send things to help people who are on your team. So every time he would open his game, he would see, oh, mom sent me this to help me and dad sent me this Mm. to help me. My parents care about me and they want Mm -hmm. to help me. And this is actually one of the things Jane McGonigal talks about in her book, that playing a cooperative game where you send resources to each other actually builds trust and kids are more Mm -hmm. likely to come talk to their parents when they play these games together. Wow. That is huge. Yeah. It's like crazy. You're winning, you're winning me over here. (laughs) Yeah. There's there's not a lot of ways that you can build that. Um, and that's a really really easy way. You can do it with a 15 minute a day game. Another thing that video games do is they can build resilience. Um, when, when kids are playing a video game that's challenging for them, they're failing about 80% of the time, which Most other pursuits, if you're failing 80% of the time, you just stop. You don't want to play it anymore. But video games have this way of making that failure fun. And so Mm. it teaches kids grit and how to pick themselves up and try again and keep trying and then eventually be able to do the hard thing and get that sense of accomplishment. And there's research that shows that skill carries over into other areas of their life. They learn how to be persistent about things that are fun. Wow. Okay, that is that is so cool, and and just from the little I've seen, uh, my Levi on his iPad recently playing some game. I don't even know what it's called, but it's just moving dots and balls. And anyway, I constantly see him saying, "Ding, oh, I, I, I lost again." I'm like, "Then why do you keep doing it?" But you're right; he wants to keep trying, so I can see that personally. Right, and he's learning how to deal with that failure and how to deal with the emotions that brings up yeah. in you. Like when you fail, yeah. you get frustrated and angry and kids figure out how to calm themselves down and like keep pushing themselves through it or when they need to take a break on the other hand. That's true. Oh, so good. Okay. So those are some huge pros. I can definitely appreciate all of those. I mean, those are solid. Um, Now let's just be fair and balanced here and talk about some of the cons of video games. Right, right. So the major con, which probably comes to the mind of every parent is modern video games are designed to be addictive. Um, Just like social media, There's a bunch of highly paid programmers behind there that are paid by the company to try to get your child's attention for as much time as possible. There's all these tricks they have in their bag to get you to play as much as possible. Um, 
However, 90% of people who play video games aren't playing in, a, in an addictive way, but that does leave 10% who do struggle to find that balance between real life and video games. And if your child mm -hmm. is one of them, you want to be one of the ones who can lead them through it rather than having them find out in college and, you know, flunk out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's huge. And, and there are some ways you can um, kind of tune in and, you know, tell if your child is leaning towards that side of addiction. That's something that I've looked up. So maybe I'll even include a little list of that in the show notes as well. Yeah. Um, I one thing important. I can say about that is in, in super better in Jane McGonigal's book, she says that you start to see those negative effects of addiction at about 21 hours of gameplay per week, which is a okay. lot. It's a lot more than you would think. Right. Yeah, but yeah. When they studied gamers, people who are playing over 21 hours of video games a week were showing deficits in, you know, social ability and in their re real life and in their happiness. So okay. you can find the own point for your family, but that's kind of a research based tipping point that you can be aware of and watch for in okay. your kids. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I just remember things like, you know, when they're forgetting to take care of themselves, eat yeah. meals, oh, yeah. <laughs> All, you know, get really angry when you tell them it's time to end. I mean, so there's going to probably be some resistance with yeah. a lot of kids stopping anything fun, but okay, yeah. well, we'll make a list of that, but go ahead with a couple more of the cons or concerns of video game use. Um, well, one that probably is particularly important, important for boy moms and even girl moms is that a lot of video games promote stereotypes and teach players to objectify women. There are a lot of mm scantily clad girls mm -hmm. hanging around mm -hmm. in video games. Um, <laughs> there's a website called Feminist Frequency that has a lot of videos about this problem in video games, and which are great for you to watch and discuss with older teenagers um, about this issue. But this is definitely something you want to be aware of, that um, video games are often not fair to women. There are newer ones that are getting better, but it's been an old boys club for a long time. Mm, that's too bad. Too yeah. Bad. And then finally, of course, like there's there's online interaction with strangers in certain games. And so that can lead to all the things you'd expect your kids being exposed to bad language, bullying, racism, sexism, pornography, or even being groomed by pedophiles. It's very rare, but it does happen in the video game world. And so you definitely want to be plugged in as a parent and know what's going on and who your kids are talking to if they're talking to anyone. Not all games are online. So there is a way to avoid that by avoiding online games. But Right. Awesome. I, I love that. And that leads us perfectly to the next question, because I think you're going to guide us in how we can avoid just, you know, randomly coming across those things. Tell us how can moms choose the best video games if they've decided to let their kids play? I think the best analogy is to think of it like food. So the lowest bar on feeding your family is you want it to be not poisonous. Like, you don't want your kids to die from what you yep. eat. So that's yes. checking for, you know, dangerous things, inappropriate content, all that mm -hmm. stuff you definitely want to do. Um, step two is you don't want to stop there. You want to, um, some food is junk food and some food is nutritious and a balanced meal. And so you want to think the same way about your video games. Is this video game potato chips or is it a salad or is it somewhere in between? Um, and you want to consider a, a very diet of video games emphasis on things that are really good for you and leaving aside the things that aren't. Mm -hmm. And then step awesome. number three would be that just like food, even if it's healthy, you can't just eat all the time. <laughs> so um, you have to teach that there are limits and there are times when we play and times when we don't play and help your kids understand why you're making those choices so that they can eventually make their own choices. Just like you do with food. You say, this is why our family's eating right now. And this is when we're not eating. And then mm -hmm. your kids learn that and they can regulate themselves eventually. Oh, that's so good. That is that super helpful analogy. I love it. Okay, you have a great list that we will include in show notes of practical resources for finding good quality games. Guys, this is so important. Use your resources because most of us moms, I know for me, the, the idea of my kids playing video games, I just get overwhelmed and I'm like, I don't have time to know everything to be able to make the call. Yeah, for Same sure. with social media. I mean, I just feel like we, it would be a full-time job. But thankfully, there's people who have done the work for us. People like Liz and also just these resources that you're going to point us to. So go ahead and run through these and then we'll include them in our show notes. Yeah, there's a lot of shortcuts you can take. There are just infinite choices right now. Um, so you do have to take some shortcuts to find out what is good. Um, 
Mm-hmm. The best resource for checking if a game is okay is Common Sense Media. You've probably heard of them before. They review books and movies, but they also do video games and they'll talk about, they break down the content for you. They say, here's language that's in it. Here's sexual content that's in it. They also say, here are positive messages that are in it. Here are positive role mm-hmm. models that are in it. And so you can look at that granular breakdown beyond just the num- the rating on the box because they are video games are rated like movies. They have an ESRB rating, but it can be tricky to tell what that means. So I right. like Common Sense Media's approach a lot better. Awesome. Love that. But there are a lot of games that aren't going to be on Common Sense Media because it's there are so many games available Mm -hmm. especially phone and tablet games are not as likely to be reviewed on there um Mm -hmm. so you can try searching for the name of the game plus reviews or parent guide but don't be surprised if you don't find anything but kind of a guide that the absence of information is kind of a guide for you because if there aren't any reviews the chances are it's probably not that great of a game and you probably don't Mm. need it (laughs) there we go so there you go that's helpful um (laughs) If if you've looked at Common Sense Media and you think, oh, well, maybe, then an, the next step, I think, is to go to YouTube or to Twitch and to look for people playing the game, to watch it. Um, hmm. You search for the game title and Let's Play, and they'll have footage of people playing the game, usually with a friendly personality who can kind of explain what's going on or talk to you about the game. Um, you can also search for the name of the game in mods, online, multiplayer, co-op, to kind of see what online interaction is going on because that's always the most difficult way part of a game to judge is Mm. the online interactions because they can't rate that that's the players making the content Mm -hmm. Ooh, interesting so use those keywords is what you're saying yeah mods online multiplayer and And co-op yeah because those will let you see what kind of interactions are going on in the game Okay, super quick side note. Um, it, would you also recommend using YouTube or Twitch and the Let's Play feature just if a parent wants to learn and maybe try playing a game with their kid? Is that a good place to just learn how it works? Yeah, um, there's a lot of video game content on on YouTube and Twitch as well, but YouTube is more accessible to parents probably. Um, you can su- search for tutorials too. Like when okay. I wanted to understand how Minecraft works so I could play uh-huh. a little bit with my kids, yeah. I just search for Minecraft tutorial on there and you'll find it. So, okay. yeah, there's a it's lot It's crazy of to me. There. I know my boys have told me that there's actual thing where people actually go online and just watch other people play for oh, hours. You know what? <laughs> like, actually, really? my kids and I do this. When we fold laundry, <laughs> we will watch videos from his YouTube channel. His name is Mr. A Game, and he plays video games and totally clean language. They're very family friendly. And there are a lot of games that I can't get access to for my kids, ones that I played growing up that he does like Super Mario 64 and stuff that aren't available. So it was really fun to watch those with my kids. And he's really funny. They got silly See, it's memes. hard for me to imagine watching someone else play, but my boys are like, no, mom, it's a thing. Like a lot of people would rather do that than play themselves. So well, you got to think about it. Is, it. is it weird to you that people watch basketball games? I guess not. <laughs> ah, so, you know, there's playing basketball and then there's watching basketball games and there's playing right. video games oh, and watching crazy. video games. So it's, Wow. Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, Actually, a thing. I did this before YouTube existed. When I was in elementary school, I used to go over to one of my friends' house and watch him play a game because it was a one player mm. game. So I'd watch him play. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Such a different world. Okay, yep. carry on. Yeah. Um, so that's investigating the content of the game. I think another important thing to think about is how the company that made the game is making a profit. They're paying people to make this game. So how are they getting money from this game? So you're going to get what you pay for. If the game is free, then your child is the one being sold. Either through ads, which they've gotten better at controlling the content of ads and trying to make those kid friendly. But I my kids definitely see ads that are not appropriate on games. Mm-hmm. So you can't mm-hmm. control the content of those ads. Or mm-hmm. the other way to make money with a game that's free is through in-game purchases. Um, Mm. and there's been a big controversy lately over the concept of loot boxes, which are, you buy a box of random items and you don't know what's going to be in it. So there's always that temptation to buy just one more because I'm sure what I want is going to be in the next one, that really rare item. So I'll just buy one more and one more. It's a gambling like thing. And it's Mm -hmm. actually getting banned in some countries because of that gambling like high and addiction that you get. Again, there's another place where gaming addiction happens. 
Um, mm. So those are very dangerous. I would not give anything with loot boxes to kids. And then some third way to make money is that the game is just an ad for a TV show or toy that they're trying to get you to purchase for your kid by making your kid obsessed with it. So right. I, I try to stick to titles that I can pay for, um, even though it's really painful to pay $60 mm-hmm. for an Xbox or a Switch game. You mm-hmm. know that they're paying their developers with that money that you spent on the game rather than advertisements and gambling and all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. That that that's so interesting. I, I confess to you before that I, I used to only let my son play anything that was free. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, that was dumb. But those were like ABC games, so I'm not too worried. But that yeah. is a really, really good point and makes perfect sense. Yeah. What, there's there's good reputable companies out there, and you can find good deals on their games sometimes. Um, I've gotten a few free good preschool tablet games that normally cost money. Um, my mm-hmm. favorite companies for the preschool set, the tablet games, are Sego Mini, Dr. Panda, Tokoboka. They all have games. They cost a couple of dollars, but there's no ads, and they're really high-quality educational games. A lot of the free educational games, they do one thing, and that's it, and it's not that interesting. But um, games by these companies tend to be more of a sandbox where it's like playing with dolls and there's tons of different things to do. And it's really interesting and actually good for your kids instead of just one thing for them to do over and over. And you are a fan, I guess, for, is this for older kids of Nintendo, right? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Nintendo. Um, We do have an Xbox as a family. My husband used to work for Microsoft, so we got into the Xbox ecosystem. But Nintendo is the the console game company that really focuses on family-friendly. So they have a great range of games that are family-friendly, whereas Xbox and PlayStation have some, but it's not a focus for them. They're more focused on the young adult college market. So Nintendo is going to be your best bet if you want to get a console and have a lot of good choices for it good quality, family-friendly, safe games. All right, guys, hope you're enjoying this conversation. Your head might be spinning a little bit like mine, but hope you're getting a lot out of it. I want to pause here real quick to thank this episode's sponsor, which is Canopy. Now, hopefully you got to hear Canopy's CEO last week on episode 111. Sean Clifford joined me for an amazing interview. So if you missed that, go back and check it out. But Canopy is an app that blocks explicit adult images on kids' phones. We've talked before about just how important it is to guard your sons from some of the bad content out there. And a lot of kids accidentally stumble across explicit images and videos online. One study found that twice as many kids had seen pornography as their parents had thought. Canopy is great. It blocks explicit content that other filters miss. How? Because it uses artificial intelligence to detect bad stuff before your kid sees it. Canopy also lets you block and manage apps and websites and works on Apple, Android, and Windows. Guys, this is some super cool technology. Be sure to use the link in my show notes, or you can go straight to canopy.us forward slash boy mom. You can get 30 days free. Check it out. I think you'll be impressed. Okay. Now let's get back to my conversation with Liz. Okay. I would like you to go over any safety precautions parents can make to protect their kids from online dangers while playing the video game. So we're talking filters, things like that. I love what you have to say on this. Okay. So the filters for games are very individual per game and per gaming system. So there will be filters sometimes in the game itself and some on the system level as well. Things are getting a lot better. Even Mm -hmm. like three years ago, there was just nothing available. And now Xbox has a lot more uh, parental controls and other systems do as well. But you're going to have to just do the research on this. My favorite website to look up what parental controls are available on a gaming system is Protect Young Eyes. They mm-hmm. have they keep their guides up to date for every device and they just make it really simple for you to go down the checklist and these are all the things you should enable. And that's so it. Good. So I, so I recommend helpful. Protect Young Eyes for up-to-date guides on that. For games, individual games, um, the most important thing to realize is that online actions, you can't rate them and you can't control them. Um, gaming companies try They will put in filters for specific words, but you know how clever people are at getting around those things. Like it just doesn't work for very long. 
So for kids under age 13, I would recommend just don't do any games that involve online interaction at all. The two big ones that I see people letting kids under 13, because most people know I'm not going to let my 12 year old on World of Warcraft, but they Minecraft and Roblox are big Mm -hmm. in the elementary set. And I see a lot of parents letting kids play them online. And Mm. I just don't think it's a, a safe thing to do. Okay. Yeah. So there are ways to play those games offline with no one else. Like Minecraft has a very good offline mode or a, what we would call a couch multiplayer or a side, side-by-side side multiplayer where you play together in the same room. You're not playing with online people. Good. So I think that mode is great for kids. But once okay. you get online, you have no idea who's there. Mm, and if, yeah. yeah. So if you wouldn't let your eight-year-old walk to the playground by themselves and just mm-hmm. stay there all day <laughs> mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. no monitoring, then you probably shouldn't yeah. let them play on a digital playground alone. That's my argument. So on important. That. Yeah. So important. And I just think this is stuff that a lot of us wouldn't be aware of. Like we assume, um, you know, as just having other conversations as part of this series, that we assume if we have filters on our computers that <clears throat> our kids are just generally safe but not realizing that once they're inside of an app, the filter will not work. And so they can go exploring using a different search bar, you know, within a different application. So these are things that just are eye-opening. And, you know, so many parents think they're doing their very best and then realize later, oh, shoot, I didn't know. And so it's just so important to have our eyes open and realize there are ways to to access these. It, you know, kids might wish that they could do it a different way, but we just tell them, be glad for what you've got. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah, for sure. And it can be really hard to walk that back. Like I let my kids play Roblox for a couple of weeks before I realized, oh, this is online and there's chat and Mm. anybody can say anything and anyone (sighs) can upload any kind of skin or object. I was like, I'm not comfortable with this. So I had to walk that back and say, okay, guys, I know we've been playing it and you love it, Mm -hmm. but I don't think it's safe anymore. So we're going to uninstall that. We're not playing that anymore. Yeah. And it's hard. There you go. It's it hard, is hard, but you're but that's the adult, good parenting. right? Yes. You're the adult. Yes. You've got to do it. And, um, and they will thank you later. And as, and I think it's important to talk to them about why. Even young kids, like like you know with Kristen Jensen, it's important to talk to them about pornography and about addiction and all these things and say, I am worried that there is there are not good people here, and so I mm-hmm. don't want you playing here. And mm-hmm. explain to them why. And yeah. Yeah, I no, think, I, I think that's important. G- really important. And I think that we too can just share from our own lives. Like we, my husband and I have told our sons before, we went to a movie and partway through, we realized that it just, it, it was not something we felt good about. And we got up and left. It was an interesting movie. We kind of wanted to stay, but we just felt really convicted that we didn't belong there. And so kind of sharing from your own life and for you as someone who plays the games too, to let them know, I'm sorry, I, I, I know this is a fun game, but we need to make some hard calls to protect our hearts. And yeah. so, yeah, really good. That's good parenting there. <laughs> yeah. And I, so there's a couple of features you can look for, for older kids who you do feel like are going to be responsible enough to handle playing an online game, you want to look for a game that doesn't have custom skins or mods, which means people can make content and upload it to the video game. And that can be outside of the rating that was on the box of the game. Um, there There are people out there who use games like Roblox, which look like little Lego figures running around a pretend world. They've created sexual simulations in this game using Mm. custom content so people will do that i know it's really it's like oh and it's not most of the community but it is there and you don't want your kid running into that so you want to look for a game that doesn't allow a lot of that most games now will allow you to mute the public chat usually when you log into the game there's a chat with everyone who's in that room playing the game which is a lot of people and people will spam that with pornography and inappropriate language um So there's usually a setting in there where you can mute the public chat so they can still chat with their friends who they got online to play with, but they won't see the general mass of messages out there. Um, Yeah. And you want to look for adult content warnings. A lot of um, the massively multiplayer online games, which is MMOs, you'll see that, have started to have a lot more of the sexual simulation aspect to them where you can customize your character's genitals and their sex. And have relationships with in-game characters. So you want to be careful that you're not buying one of those for your team. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Not not for them. No. 
And then I think oh. it's extra important, like we talked about before, searching on YouTube and Twitch and paying attention to the culture surrounding the game because the game is kind of what the players make it. So if you see a lot of questionable content in the community, then you know that is probably the people who they are going to be playing with in the game. Well, we're getting to some fun, more good news here. So thank you. That's all. That's a lot. I know. But that stuff is it's hard, important. but it's so important. It is. It is. It is. So you encourage us to set standards for how our family will play and why the best limits for your kids are an internal filter, as we've learned too from Kristen Jensen. Yeah. No filter is perfect. Give us a couple more guidelines along um, as far as this part goes. It's really important to discuss with your kids what your family's decisions around video games are and why they are that. Earlier this year, we had been homeschooling because of the pandemic, and we had been moving between states, and we had just gotten into this loop where we were playing a lot of video games, more than I was comfortable with. So we had a little family meeting. I got out a big whiteboard, and we started drawing on it a chart of our week and all the different times we were playing video games. And we got to about Thursday, and my seven-year-old is like, Mom, this is too much. This is way too much. (laughs) And you'll be surprised how much they can realize if you lay out for them how much free time they have and how much of it is getting used in video games and brainstorm all the other things they would also like to include in their life that are getting squeezed out you'll be surprised how reasonable they can be I've you you'll drift back in that direction and then have to correct but Mm -hmm. I've done this a couple times and every time my kids have set really reasonable limits when I talk to them about I love that. that it's really putting you know putting it in in their responsibility their they get to make that call i think it's more powerful than if we just try to control them or lay down limits so i love that you include them in that conversation yeah it puts the, it in perspective because they also have other things they want to do but video games mm-hmm. are really fun and really mm-hmm. they they speak to your brain in a really really powerful way so it's easy it's easy for even adults to get caught up in you know watching Netflix for hours, right? Yeah. It's not mm-hmm. something that's going to go away in their life mm-hmm. just because they get yeah. older. So they need to learn the skills and why you're doing it. So so I think it's also it's important to talk about the positive things that you're getting from video games and then also the things that you'll miss if you're just playing video games. So we talked we talk in our family, okay, we like playing video games because there are good stories and we really like being able to play together. And we like challenging puzzles and we like things that invite creativity, um, like Minecraft, where you can build all of these crazy, cool creations. My boys have built this whole castle together and it has like seven levels and all these basements and certain rooms mm-hmm. for storing certain things. And they just love That's building awesome. that together. It's yeah. so great. It's like pretend play and Legos all at the same time. Um, so those are the things that we like. And so we say we're going to look for games that have these things. And if you write write those down, then when they bring you a new game, you can say, okay, does it have these things? Is it doing okay. something we don't already have? Why? Mm. Why do we need a new game if we already have one that does that? And you can set up that conversation in where they need to convince you that this actually adds to what our family wants instead of just every single game they see an ad for, they get. <laughs> yeah. 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 Other important things to talk about is who they're going to play with and where they're going to play. Are they allowed to play video games at a friend's house? Are they allowed to play a game they haven't, they don't know at a friend's house? And how are you going to deal with that as a family? Those are important conversations to have before it happens. And then you find out your kid was playing, you know, some Mm -hmm. first person shooter game that you don't think is okay at their friend's house Mm -hmm. because they didn't know they should ask you or that they should talk about it. And I'm reading somebody's mind right now who's listening and is has struggled with the idea of talking to friends' parents who have different rules than you do. I mean, this could send us down a whole nother rabbit trail, but I'm guessing we just need to be comfortable having some conversations with other parents. Yeah, it's very important to be very non-judgmental about it and open and say, this is kind of what we're trying to encourage. Um, But the way you play with video games will interact with the way they play with video games. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. I have a funny story kind of about that. My, my kids, they like to say things as short as possible. So it started being, instead of, can we play video games? It would be VG for video game. <laughs> yeah. And then it became BG and then it turned into bugga. So, okay. There you but go. <laughs> one day a parent around the corner texted me and said, Oh, it's our kids bugga time. 
And I was like, ah. so yeah, like those things flow through families. They so do. it's important they to do. talk to the other yeah. families around you and they don't have to have the same rules as you. No, but, but your say, kids also can follow your rules when they're at someone else's house. Right. You can talk about which rules are important that they keep at other people people's houses and which ones are more flexible like Mm. maybe you're okay with them playing a little extra if they're playing at a friend's house but I'm not okay with you playing games that I don't know what they are or playing games that have online interaction so you need to talk to me about what games you're playing but if your friend's rule is they can play video games for you know an hour and a half and you only have half an hour today that's whatever that's probably okay we can be flexible with that but this is this is the important rule and you know talk about those things sure so helpful. Um, another important thing is to talk about where games will be played. Again, mm-hmm. if your kid is getting into trouble in an online game, it's probably going to be that they're playing it behind closed doors with headphones and you don't know what's going on. It's so important that you keep the gaming out in the public area. You keep it open and you discuss what's happening in their games with them so that when there is a problem, you will be able to talk about it with them. Mm-hmm. Um, so good. You can talk okay. about you. You also want to be talking about the content of the games. So, you know, why is that character dressed that way? Why do you think they did that? Why is that character male, female, old, young, black, Hispanic? Mm. What do you think the game is trying to say about that character? Why do you think this game can only be solved by killing everybody? Why can't anybody talk to each other? You know, you, <laughs> yeah. you do conversations. Need to, you need to talk about these things and you can't do that if you are just like shutting it out as a parent. So you need to listen to your kids about what games they're playing and know about them. Mhm. I love that. And of course, you mentioned here to just discuss the dangers of gaming addiction and yeah. I think that just addiction in general. I mean, it's an important conversation to have in the home and talk about, you know, how some people probably are just more prone to it than others. Also, our behaviors can lead to addiction. So just really good to have those conversations over time as kids grow up. Okay. So let's wrap up with any other wisdom from your research or experience. I like that you've got some suggestions for great games for playing as a family. So fire away. I I know that playing a big, long video game like Minecraft that's super involved can be intimidating to a parent. So I have a couple of suggestions for games that are much easier to pick up. Is that like the monopoly of video games where you're like, oh boy. Yeah. Well, (laughs) here we go. It's, it's just that it's so open-ended and it never ends uh and you never get anything done. So (laughs) it's really fun for kids, but I I don't play a lot of it myself because I just don't have, you know, three hours to devote to building a castle. Um, (laughs) But there are some games that we really like to play together. So one of my favorites that's available for a lot of different platforms is called, it has a weird name. So hold on with me. It's called (laughs) Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, which is a really weird name. But the the premise is you are all characters inside a little ship and you're going around with your ship and rescuing space frogs and bunnies and saving the universe from the forces of hate with the forces of love. And the fun part about it is that you're all in the same ship and you're running around doing different stations. So one of you will be con- steering the ship. One might be doing the shields. One is doing this front gun. One is doing the back. It's a family. Yeah. And so you're all having to coordinate and cooperate with each other and figure out who's good at what. And so there's a lot of communication and it's like a team building exercise in a video wow. game for your family. Wow. So that one is super fun and the graphics are just really cute and it's very friendly for a non-gaming parent. (laughs) I kind of want to play that one. Maybe I'll surprise my kids and be like... You should try it. You should try it. Tonight, don't argue with me. We're playing a video game as a family. (laughs) They would be like, who are you and what did you do with my mom? (laughs) Another one that might be kind of fun for moms is called Overcooked and there are several in the series, but you run a kitchen together. But these kitchens are in very strange places like on a pirate ship or on a earthquake zone or in the middle of a road and so there's all these obstacles what? and you're trying to <laughs> fill orders in your restaurant but I relate not, to that <laughs> right not everybody can get to everything so again the coordination and cooperation of passing things back and forth and trying not to burn food it's okay, really overcooked crazy. that I one is it. a little more challenging it's it's yeah. still really frustrating for me to play again you're getting the yeah. how to deal with frustration with as a family totally, <laughs> totally. oh i love it uh, a very silly one that is recently become a two player game is called the untitled goose game 
where you, you are just this mischievous goose and you're running around making trouble together, stealing people glasses or their lunch or you know turning on the faucet just all this troublemaking which can be really fun if you have mischievous kids my 11 year old would love that it is so it's a really funny sounds a game. lot like his real life it's a really These are all funny a, game. Little, a little too much like our real life and then for I'm the for, for people with teenagers you have to have played among us like this is a great game to play at a family gathering with all the teens cousins i've heard my uncles. boys talk about this yeah yeah i mean it's sort of just like the that game called Mafia, Werewolf, or Murder in the Dark. You probably played it as a kid. And there's just nothing like the first time your child stabs you in the back because they're the traitor <laughs> and they murder you and you're just like, what happened? And then you get them back. And it's, uh. it's just so much fun together as a family. And again, it's something that even our seven-year-old can play that with us. And he gets such a blast out of when he finally wins and tricks us all. Cute. And so- uh. It's just such yeah, a good one. they're learning one. some life skills there. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, if, if you really want to do one, um, if your husband's super into gaming and you are not, you could try this game called It Takes Two. And it's it's got a couple plots. The, the game, the two main characters are a couple who are thinking about getting divorced and their daughter makes a wish that turns them into little dolls. And so they have to work together to get back to their real bodies and their real life and their relationship mm. gets fixed along the way. So, Aww, yeah, so it's a really fun game. So there's a lot of good there's a lot of good games out there. You just have wow. to find them. You do. Yeah. Wow, Liz, this is incredibly helpful. I I just appreciate all the work you've done, all of your experience uh, to that you would share it with all of us. I yeah. know that there are so many moms listening that, you know, I think most moms I talk to, we're all just in a state of overwhelm when it comes to video games. And it's easier to say, we just don't do them. But I totally get now, the more I talk to you, the more I get that maybe that's not necessarily the best avenue. And so I just love your balanced approach and appreciate it so much. You just have to use them in a conscientious way, like decide how you want to use them rather than letting them just take over because they will. <laughs> they will right, if you right. let them. Yeah. I mean, it's all about being intentional about mm-hmm. all things. And I feel the same way about social media. I'm like, sometimes I hate it, but yet I, I also see the beauty in it. So these are all things we face in the world we live in. And God wasn't surprised that we were born in the day and age we were in. And so I think we're all able to uh, do the hard work of parenting well. So Liz, uh, I I just can't thank you enough. I'll be linking to the articles you've written and uh, these notes as well. So I think yeah, from you. a whole lot of boy moms listening, big thank you. No problem. I, I know you guys can do this. It, it's mm. it's good fun out there. It's There's really mm. more good than there is bad out there. Okay. Well, thanks so much. God bless you. And I'm sure we'll want to have you back another time. So, <laughs> All right. so in advance. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Liz. Take care. All right, friends. Hope you enjoyed that conversation. As you could tell by the end of that, I was like ready to sign up to become a gamer. (laughs) My kids were laughing at me, but um, I don't plan on becoming a gamer. I might check out a couple of those she mentioned at the end. And and really, I just think this was a really healthy conversation for me personally, as I encourage and support families in this area of navigating life with video games, especially when you live in those places that are cold and dark and, and, you know, the pandemic, all all the things that made video games that much more relevant, right? So um, definitely head over to show notes at monicaswanson.com forward slash episode dash 112, 112. And you will find Liz's notes and links to anything we mentioned, including the articles over at Protect Young Minds. And just appreciate you taking the time to be here. And I hope this is an episode you can share with a lot of your friends. Uh, Maybe you can take a screenshot and share it on social media. That would be so helpful. And I just want to thank you for being a part of this community. You guys are awesome. Can't wait to see you again next week for another important conversation that you're not going to want to miss. So I'll just leave you out with that cliffhanger. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your week until next time. Aloha. Aloha.